Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. We're in 1 Kings chapter 12, and we have moved on to the point where Solomon's son, Rehoboam, has lost. <laughs> he's lost 10 twelfths of the kingdom of Israel. And only Benjamin and Judah are, um, are with him. The rest have defaulted over to a man named Jeroboam, who Ahijah the Shilonite prophesied would take a good chunk of the kingdom away from Solomon's descendants because of his disobedience. What with, um, what with turning his heart away from the Lord due to marrying so many foreign wives, non-believers, and just, and just in general, all the other mistakes I've covered in the past few videos. And I was thinking the other day when I was reading through the story, I was saying to myself, now what, what would Jeroboam's response be like? You know, the Lord obviously anointed David, obviously had his hand on his son. You know, what, what can Jeroboam do to, uh, you know, to encourage, a, I'm, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, the Lord said, I'm going to separate the two, uh, I'm going to separate Israel into two nations because it's going to be punishment on David's house. But my covenant is still with David's house. I'm not, like, destroying him or forsaking him completely. He's still going to be there. He's still going to have something. And, you know, so it's kind of like, what would Jeroboam do to restore the nation's order, to encourage, you know, following God, even though the nation's been split up? You know, what, what's a good way to, to talk about unity? What's a good way to make Israel one again? How can we unite the kingdoms? And, you know, that, that since he was called by God, it's, I guess, uh, you know, that's kind of like a noble way of thinking. And, of course, you know, we have a lot of guys in the Bible who followed God, and they were pretty noble guys. I mean, they all made mistakes, but they did some pretty great things. So what does Jeroboam decide to do? What, how does he decide to follow the Lord with, you know, ten twelfths, ten of the twelve tribes of Israel following him? How does he decide to do it? Go to 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore the king, that's Jeroboam, asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said, oh, wait, hold on, back up. Back up to verse 26, and Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn back to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Therefore, sorry about that, the king asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? The story of the golden calf, and Moses, and Aaron, and how Israel completely messed that up. Instead of trying to reunite the kingdom, he does his very best to make sure that he, he and his sons and his lineage keep the ten tribes that he's been given. He doesn't seek reunification. He doesn't, at the very least, just try to continue following the Lord. He thinks, okay, what can I do to keep my sphere of influence and my sphere of power, not what can I do to serve the Lord? Greed is a real vice, and it ends up destroying a lot more than it protects. You think you're looking out for yourself and you're looking out for your own? All you're doing is finding a reason for the Lord to take it out of your hands, and trust me, he is the Lord who gives and the one who takes away. It's not, yes, we've got to do our part. Yes, we have to work hard. We have to make plans. We have to be timely. I'm really bad at the last part, personally. But it is ultimately the Lord who gives and who takes away. Solomon himself said in Proverbs, that one, the richest man in history said that money takes wings and flies away. The Lord's the one who gives and who takes. And Jeroboam, by walking away from the Lord, all he did was guarantee that he would mess up those ten tribes, that he'd mess up the nation of Israel as opposed to the nation of Judah, and he would mess up his own reign. That's the only thing he guaranteed. He did his very best to, to guarantee his success, to guarantee his wealth, and he did it through idolatry. He did it through turning away from the Lord, and that is... That ain't a good thing. He didn't think about, and he certainly didn't think about the larger issue of reuniting Israel, bringing everyone together. He did. He what? He didn't choose the path of Moses, who prayed for the Lord. You know, don't make a greater people out of me. Please forgive this people and restore them. The complete opposite spirit, which is a. And as it turns out, 
um, as we keep reading, Israel didn't have a single good king their entire reign. Judah had some good kings. Israel didn't have a single king who followed the Lord. He set a horrible precedent, and they ended up being completely and utterly destroyed before the nation of Judah, and the nation never did get back together. And he, as the first king of Israel, set a horrible precedent and set up a stumbling block that no one overcame throughout that entire nation's history. So we've got to be careful with what we choose to protect and most certainly how we choose to follow the Lord as opposed to our own self-interest. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.